name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. As we celebrating the wedding of Cana, so today is The title for today's sermon is My Soul's Bridegroom Found in Cana. My Soul's Bridegroom Found in Cana. Cana. Cana's wedding. How much do we know about Cana's wedding, or what do we know? What we know through today's gospel that Virgin Mary, the Lord Jesus, and some of his disciples, they were invited to a wedding. And they went. But who is the bride and groom related to? Or what's his name? No one knows. No one knows. But what we know, a few hours later, they ran out of wine. And since St. Mary knows who Jesus is, she intervenes as the intercessor between the Lord Jesus and the servants, saying to the Lord Jesus, do something about it. Save the situation. And to the servants, saying, do whatever he tells you. And actually they listen, they fill the six jars of water, and of course the Lord Jesus turned that day, turned the water into wine. So what we can do, or what can we get actually out of this short story? Let's focus on three points. Number one, Turning the water into wine, that is a symbol of what is yet to come. Or in other words, like the Lord Jesus pointing his finger about on something, that which is, you know, it's coming later on. That's number one. Number two, the upcoming is the Holy Thursday. Because that was in the beginning of his ministry until the Holy Thursday, there was almost like three, three and a half years difference. So he was pointing to the Holy Thursday, the day he turned, not the water into wine, but the wine into his own blood. To his own blood. And he recommended. He recommended that means he said to his disciples, do this in remembrance of me. And of course, that's why we still celebrating the Holy Liturgy. And to the end of the days. Because he said, do this in remembrance of me. So these words of the Lord Jesus, do this in remembrance of me, you know, our promise that every time we celebrate the Holy Liturgy, he will be here and turn the wine into his own blood. What a tremendous way. The third point is the wedding six jars of wine were empty. What's the symbol of that? Six, number six, and jars symbol of the people of the world back then and today of course but most likely then at that time the jars were empty and you know empty of wine and wine the wine is a symbol of happiness when the person you know drink wine it gets a little bit happy i think right i don't know i'm not drinking i'll take you that's what's happening so, uh, yes, they get happy. So what happened? So that's like saying, you know, the world is running out of joy. That's why they were empty. 
The world ran out of joy. That's why the Virgin Mary intercession gets involved immediately. Saying to the Lord Jesus, save the people, save the situation. And to the service, which is us now, she's telling us to do whatever he tells us. Listen to the Lord, obey his words. Why? Because he is the only one, the only one who can give you a true joy. Believe me, it doesn't matter how much you go out there to the world, or how much the world can give you, you think it's happiness, joy, comfort, but nothing like the joy of the, the Lord. Nothing. But if you make him your soul's bridegroom, if you make him your soul's bridegroom, yes, you will get that joy. So now we know why St. John didn't mention the bridegroom's name. Why? Because he is presenting the world a bridegroom, which is Jesus. Now, let's move on to another point, which is, since you know we are talking about the Lord Jesus as a bride and groom, let's find out, biblically, let's find out if he is, you know, the bride and groom. Jesus is the bride and groom, and the church is, he's a bride, and you know, he bought very high price to buy, he's a bride which is, you know, his blood was very precious, a price. And he explained that as he is, you know, bride and groom many times, many times in the Bible. So one of them, through the five wise and five foolish virgins parable. Okay? So when the Lord Jesus, he was talking about that parable, he said, all of them, all of them, he meant all the Christians. By the way, the five virgins and five wise, five wise virgins and five foolish, that's a symbol of the Christian people, not the whole world. And now we will find out. So when he said all of them, that means all the Christians, wise and foolish. And all of them, since they love Jesus, they went to meet him. They went to meet the groom, carrying their lamps in hands. What does that mean, or what's that you know, symbol for? The lamps, my beloved, is a symbol of our body since you know, we received the Holy Spirit on the day of baptism. So that should be lit and should be also increased by the Holy Spirit. So all of them carrying their hand lamps you know, in hands. So the five wise took enough of oil. What's the oil for? Or what is the unit symbol for? The oil is symbol says, you know, I have the Holy Spirit. If I increase it, that means I will have good deeds. I will have good deeds. That's what the holy oil symbol for. So the, the five wives took enough of oil in their vessels, but the foolish didn't. Unfortunately, some, they don't get filled by the Holy Spirit. So the Lord Jesus continues the parable, says the bride and groom was delayed and all of them slept. He was delayed for a purpose, and all of them slept. Then at midnight, what's the midnight for? It is the day we don't know, judgment day, or the day that every knee, every knee in the world should bow to the Lord Jesus. 
So that day which is the second coming or the judgment day or the you know, very difficult or great day, He will come. He will come and all the wise people will have enough of oil, of good deeds. They know how to forgive each other, love each other, all these, you know, the Christian virtues. And that's of the Holy Spirit, I mean of the Holy Oil that they carry on. So at that day, they will be ready to take off with the bride and groom to the everlasting wedding. Wedding which means so much of joy that every single one of us looks for that joy. Now sometimes we can't find it unless, like I said, we make our Lord Jesus, our souls be bride and groom. But the foolish people will come late. That's what the parable says. That they will come late because when they stopped, they have no more oil, they went to buy some of the oil. What does that mean? That means the people, the Christian people who spend year after year, decades, you know, going after so many goals, many things that we wish like everybody else and keep busy on life. Where is the Lord Jesus? It's not there. It's not his in, in their life. We may love anything else but the Lord Jesus we kept them on the side. So that's what it says the parable. They went to buy. They got busy. So and when they came back and they said to the Lord, 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 open for us. <coughs> His response to them was, I do not know you. What a difficult day, can you imagine, for me, pretending I am a Christian. And on the, at the end of the day, the Lord Jesus will tell me, I don't know you. Lord, many times I went to the church, I received the Holy Communion, I read the Bible, so on, on, and on. But I wasn't your soul's bride and groom. You loved everybody else, and I was at the end. You loved everybody, everything else more than me. You gave time, so much time of, to everything, but not me. You loved to talk with so many, not me. What a difficult day will be for me to hear, I don't know you. So the last point, my beloved, since you know our Holy Father set the Cana wedding on the first day of the Great Lent. Let's see, you know, why they did that. And let's actually embrace what I said, I just mentioned to you, with the Great Lent fasting. The great Lent time, my beloved, is time to get filled by the Holy Spirit more and more. More and more. Actually, the Holy Fathers named it a harvest time. Harvest time, that means you go so to such a big field and you can find whatever you like. Go into it and get what you need. So from the Father's, you know, spiritual life experience, they said the Great Lent is the most holy time of the year. How come? You will be supported by the Holy Spirit and surrounded by the grace of God. Why? To be a fruitful tree in His church. fruitful tree in his church. And if you want to find out you know, the Holy Spirit's fruits or virtues, go to Galatians 5, you will find nine of them. Nine different fruits. Go, read it, see what you're looking for, what you need, and work on it during the 50 days of Lent. So at the end, my beloved, so it is a perfect time 
It is perfect time to realize your weaknesses and work on it. All of us we have, my beloved, but we need to work on it. Number two, it's time to fight desires of the flesh and benefit your spirit. Let it grow. The third and last, it is time to learn how to fight satanic thoughts and conquer. As St. James said in chapter 4, verse 7, resist the devil. Yes, we need to resist it. How? Unless I am fasting. Do you think I can resist it? I can't resist him. So that's why our Lord gave us this great tool. Resist the devil and he will flee. He will escape from you. And God bless you.